Hey guys, welcome to another video from the Power Bros. I'm Dom and today we are gonna be having a look at the engine on this beauty. I'm gonna show you around what it is, how it makes 350 odd horsepower, what we can do to make it a little bit better and we're also gonna fix a fault. I'll also show you a tool that you may want to have in your garage for around 20 pounds, which will come in awfully helpful in the future and this will suit anyone with any car. Um, maybe if you're not, you don't really like electrical stuff. <laughs> Uh, but before we get stuck into that, let's jump to that intro. As some of you may have heard me discuss in the past, on a 225, these have an auxiliary water pump which is mounted just here, sort of behind the headlight and to the side, sort of behind this grille, and it's mounted to the radiator. And it looks a little bit like this. Now, this is actually the one I removed from this car earlier on today because it doesn't work. Now, this should come on from the moment you put your key in and turn the ignition on, this pump will start supplying water around the car. It runs water through where the turbo is. And what it does is it will run for the entirety of the time your ignition on. When the car is running, this will be running. Then when you take your key out, turn it off, pull the key out, lock the car, this should run for about 10 minutes, eight to 10 minutes after the car has finished its journey. So thus allowing the coolant to slowly cool down the turbo. Um, and this actually, I would say, is inherently most of the problem why the manifolds crack on the 225s. Because these fail, no one notices these, it doesn't bring up a fault or anything like that. These fail, it no longer cools your turbo down, you've been out for a drive, you turn it off, you get out, you go away, and your turbo is sitting there, red hot, not getting cooled down. Now, these are only on the 225s. I believe the 180s don't have one. If you do have one, it will literally be mounted like that. I'll show you in a minute, underneath there. Um, and it just has two pipes, one that comes from this T piece here and the other one that goes off over the alternator and that way around the back. Now, testing them, I hear you say, very simple. Um, turn your ignition on and you should, you may not hear it run. Don't turn the car on. And if you if you're, you can see it, just put your hand on it or on the pipe and you should be able to just feel it humming, or you might hear it depending on how old it is. Now this one didn't work most of the time, but when it did work, it sort of did like a, like it was trying to run, but the pump had basically failed. Um, and I'll show you how to test them. I've got another new one over here. So let's go over to the bench. Now, this is the tool I was talking about. Now this is called a power probe. Great bit of kit. And what it does is you connect it to a battery with crocodile clips, and then it gives you a 12 volt supply. Now, if we take this original pump on the top here, on the plug, it says negative and positive. You put that onto the negative, and then this, you can press the on button, and it will give you whatever you've got on the battery. So if the battery is 12 volts, it will give you 12, it says 12.5 here, it will give you 12 volts. And all you've got to do is not, not touch them together, because you'll blow it up, um, but just touch it onto the other pin, and it will say, look, it's giving you 12 volts, but there's literally nothing there. Listen, nothing. So that is absolutely dead. If we take this brand new one that I had sat on the shelf, again, connect up the negative, the ground, negative, what we want to call it. And then if I put this up, hopefully you'll be able to hear this on the camera. So that, you know, is then working. Um, and that's how it should, it should run. Honestly, it runs almost silently. If you're in a dead quiet place, you park up, you turn the car off, you might just hear a faint hum if you put your ear to the grill. But like I said, just reach in, just pop your hand against it or against the pipe, you'll feel the flow of water. Now without that, A, your car's not getting the water flow that it was designed to have and should have. Um, you could crack your manifold and you could have heating issues over, because this runs really, really hot because it's a hybrid turbo, bigger turbo, the manifold gets hot. And I noticed, the, the reason I actually noticed this was because when I got out, turned the car off, went to walk away, I could hear it like ting, 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 ting. You know when metal gets really hot and it was tinging away, I was thinking, that's weird. Put my hand on the pump, nothing. And I was like, ah, oh, that'll be great to show everyone. So what I'll do is I'll reposition the camera now and we'll have a look at it in situ so you can see what I'm on about. Um, but yeah, this tool, fabulous. This was £20 off eBay and it allows you to test voltage to see um, like on a battery or something. You can test 
and it will tell you if there's voltage there. Um, you can also put power onto stuff. So if you wanted to say, for instance, fitted a stereo, but you think it needs a permanent live, magic. Um, or if you wanted to test something without having to run two cables to a battery and do it on a hot one, um, this will test it. It'll also tell you the voltage it takes. So very, very cool piece of kit. I'll stick a link down to this. This is off eBay. It's a US Pro one. Um, you can spend a couple of hundred quid on these, but this was 22 pound delivered. Comes in a little snazzy case. So what more could you want? Right, let's have a look where that is. All right, so you see that blue hose? There, that's where the pump is mounted. Just there. So there's the pump, just mounted with two fixings just above it, and then this pipe here is the one that goes off from the bottom. There's the pump. And it's just mounted against the radiator, nice and simply there. So, let's see if we can get a better view. Yeah, there's the pump, just here. So, ideal for swapping out, very simple. It's two Torx, 30s, I think it is, they're quite big ones. Um, maybe 35s. If you have a 225, it's definitely something I would check. It's not um, sort of a massive deal breaker, but if, again, if you're going to look at a car and it's a 225, it's worth checking if it's got one and if it has, um, if it works, because that's for a genuine Bosch one, I think they're about 80 pound, 80, 90 pound. Um, you want to buy a decent one because it's going to run the entire time you're driving. 10 minutes after you're driving every single time. So it's gonna run a lot. So you wanna get a half decent one, but very easy and simple thing to swap. Now, let's have a little talk about what is in this bay, shall we? I hear you all saying. And I will talk you through it as best I can. Obviously I didn't do a lot of this work, so I'm not gonna to pretend to know or to, to claim any of it. Let's start with, let's get some light on it, shall we? Might be a bit better. Okay, so we start from left to right. Um, it's got a, a track sag pipe, which is an unbaffled um, straight pipe. It doesn't use the original elbow on the side. It actually just has a, on the side here, there's normally a red elbow that comes up that meets the um, charge pipe. This one just has a little straight one, so therefore it shouldn't break as much. That's usually um, sort of one of the main reasons for using that. Um, and it, is, it looks a bit nicer. Fitting... It's not going anywhere. It's got one bracket there. I D lead one another bracket up the top. Oh, it has got actually like it has got a bracket on. It hasn't got a bolt in. <laughs> um, so that should be bolted on there. Maybe that's something I'll get onto. Manifold at the back you can't see, but I'll stick a picture up for you. That is a ported China fold with an AET 380 turbo. Um, probably the best you can buy for a hybrid turbo. It is going to get you the most power. From a hybrid it will give you the best spool not particularly cheap i think they're about 1500 pound new for the turbo i think the manifold if you can find a ported one probably three or four hundred pounds it's got the badger 5 big um tip running a stock dv um stock e uh, n75 got a catch can just because i'm assuming probably underneath uh, all of the pipes were damaged so it makes sense just to fit this. They've got this lovely heat shield here, um, aftermarket fitted, not sure. I think this is a, a CB Autos one. Um, I'll try and find out. Just normal, um, more recent core packs. Um, it's got injectors, The I think there's 650s. It's got the adapters on. Now, one of the adapters is playing up a little bit. So what I'm actually gonna do is, I'll, sh I'll show the adapter actually. Makes sense too. Um, so they're a different plug, the adapter. So that's the plug um, and it's like an adapter to take it from this odd two pin to like a normal VAG style plug. And one of them plays up a little bit. So every so often you'll go on boost and it'll throw a fault. So what I've done is I've swapped them around to see if it's the plugs, but you can actually order a hard wire kit. So you basically cut it here and then you solder on these new wires which have the new plugs in so there's no adapter, it is just straight on, straight fit, no mucking about, hopefully alleviating one of the joints. Um, it's got a full forged um, silicon hose kit for water. It also has quite a few SFS um, blue coolant pipes for the front mount intercooler um, to match everything else. We've got no math 
because it's, because it's an Ignatron standalone, which is mounted under here, it does not need to run a MAF. It takes its reference from elsewhere. Um, so it's just got this nice pipe with a, a small filter on the end. Now, the only thing I don't like about this is it's not supported. So, I mean, it can't really go far, but I don't like it. I, I could definitely be better. So what I'll probably do is get, take this out completely, get a new piece of pipe, and I might try and remount um, my existing Cloud9 bracket somehow uh, with that larger filter with the velocity stacks. I think it would just be a lot nicer. Um, I may just need to buy a small piece of pipe to get it, because obviously normally it's the math finishes about there, just to get it round there a little bit and also paint it crackle black. I'm not a massive fan of the, the silver, but there's a few little bits. I mean, there's, um, there is covers inclusive here. I've taken a lot of them off just so I can get down to do that part. Um, but besides that, it's pretty much a stock looking engine bay, which I really like anyway, because it's a great looking thing um, regardless. Let's just swap this over you can see me. Yeah, it's a stock, stockish looking engine bay. They've tried to keep it um, pretty sort of fact, factory looking. Sitting on the battery fuse box. Um, <laughs> but I quite like it. I like the, the crackle black. Do I get a large plenum? I need to, a, new, a bigger inlet manifold. I need to speak to Badger Fire because I don't know whether or not it would benefit me with the smaller turbo. I don't know if it needed a bigger one for when you have bigger turbo because um, it changes, obviously, everything you change changes the characteristics of the build. Now, this car is mapped so well. It drives so well. I wouldn't want to change anything and make it worse or something that's going to need alterating, uh, alterations and that. So I'm going to speak to him about the plenum. I'm also going to speak to him about water meth. Now, I want to fit um, a water meth kit just for cooling, um, just to bring, because obviously, if you bring your intake temps down, you bring your exhaust temps down. Um, you'll get a cleaner burn. So if you've ever driven your car at say like two or three in the morning or on a really cold day, once the car's warmed up, the oil's warmed up and everything, that cold air makes the car feel that, that much quicker. Um, now, if you have ever monitored your intake temps, say it's 20 degrees outside, your car could be getting 30 degree air because obviously by the time it's taken the air from around the engine bay, it's gone all around the system. It will cool down, but it's not gonna cool down that much. So if you're just sitting in traffic, these can see 30, 40 degrees. So these get really, really hot. Um, so if you put meth on, you can, and you normally, there's two ways of doing it. Sometimes they put a nozzle here and then, some, and then they'll put a, one in a spacer here or about 12 inches away from um, where it goes into the inlet manifold. Sometimes they run a spacer here. There's, there's all different ones. Sometimes you can do injection uh, direct ports. You'll have one in each of the four ports there. It all depends on what you're trying to do. Um, but basically what you're trying to do is bring down the temperature and you can bring it down to somewhere in the, like five or six degrees Celsius. So much, much cooler. Um, you'll get a slightly cleaner burn. It also sometimes gives you a little meth pop because you run 50% meth, 50% deionized water because it's not meant to increase your octane. It is just meant to be a cooling um, thing. And if you've ever felt meth or anything, uh, anything like that, it, like alcohol, when it touches your skin, it sort of goes cold and vaporizes. Um, and that's a similar effect that it has in this. But I need to speak to the tuner because I don't want to fit it, then go there and he'll be like, oh, why did you do it like that? You should have done it like this to, to maximize the car. So if you're ever planning any mods, engine um, mods, any things you're going to change, always speak to the person who's likely to tune your car because you may have to do it twice. You may not get the most out of it um, or it might not just be the best you want it to be. And if you're trying to strive for performance, it's definitely worth speaking to them first, seeing what you can do. But yeah, glad we've got that pump switched. Um, I'll tell you what, I'll turn, I'll show you now. So if I turn the ignition on, hopefully the mic will, the mic will pick it up. So if I just turn the ignition on, give it a few seconds, and then turn it off again. I can hear it running from here, but. So you can hear it running, and if you just put your hand on the pipe, you can feel it. And it's just, it'll just allow it to cool down the system just after you finish the drive. 
So hopefully it will sort of prevent your, your turbo or your manifold having any issues in the future. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at the engine bay. Sorry we didn't get to do too much, but to be honest, kind of the reason I bought this was because I don't have to do loads and loads to it because it is already a very beautiful car. There is loads of little things I've got planned, especially on the inside. Um, but on the outside, on the, the, the engine bay, not too much to do. We'll just make it great again. So we'll, um, we'll have a chat with Badger 5 and we'll see where we go from there. But until next time, guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.